Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Fan Zhang from University of uh, Bristol. I'm very happy to have the opportunity today to present our work in uh, AOM sim Research Symposium this year. And uh, the title of my presentation is Evaluating Video Codex Through Objective and the Subjective Assessment. Uh, I think everyone here has seen the advances in video compression from MPAC standardized AVC, HEVC, and uh, VVC to AOM royalty-free AV1. And uh, there are several investigations we have found uh, comparing the compression performance of these codecs, but most of them are based on objective quality assessment. Um, so in these comparisons, uh, various coding configurations have uh, have been used, uh, which result in a widely different uh, performance results. So in this work, we try to use relatively uh, fair configurations to evaluate the overall compression performance of three video codecs, HM, VTM and uh, AV1 through objective and subjective assessment um, for various bit rates and uh, resolutions. Um, we also evaluate the performance of uh, several popular objective quality metrics uh, against uh, the collected subjective opinion scores. And in the end, we try to indicate the ways based on our recent uh, work um, in which the Kodak comparison, uh, Kodak performance can be improved in future standards. Um, so that's the three uh, video codecs we have uh, tested, uh, including HEVC HM uh, 16.18, uh, VVC VTM 4.01, and AV1. So we have used the two different versions of AV1. Uh, the first one is a slightly older, uh, which was released in uh, May 2018, last year. And uh, uh, another one is more uh, recent, uh, so released in these months. And uh, we try to use a fair um, uh, configuration for all these four um, uh, codecs. So we employed the default uh, random access uh, configuration, maintain profile for HM and uh, VTM, and we set up the intra period as uh, 60 four and the GOP size uh, to be 16 for these two codecs. Uh, and for AV1, uh, we try to use the uh, the best um, um, coding parameters, which, which can give us the optimum uh, coding performance. Um, and uh, some of them are the uh, recommended uh, coding parameters, um, but uh, some of them we try to be uh, fair. For example, the KF max distance equals uh, 64. We try to be uh, fair uh, with uh, HM and uh, VTM. And uh, for the uh, more recent AV1 version, we found if we set the lag in, in, in frames to be 19, we can get a much better performance. So we have changed the, the, the parameters, uh, that, that parameter to, to 19. But because the, lim uh, because the li limited time we have got for the latest uh, um, a, a version of AV1, we can, do, we can only do an uh, objective uh, assessment for that version. But for the other uh, three codecs, we, we have done both objective and uh, subjective assessment. Um, in order to test their performance, we have employed uh, uh, nine uh, different sort sequences. Uh, so in the, among these sequences, we have got three sequences with uh, um, static um, uh, camera mo without camera motion, but with local movement, uh, uh, local movement, and uh, three sequences with um, uh, dynamic textures like water and the the moving um, leaves, and uh, three sequences with uh, camera motion. Um, so in order to uh, fully understand the uh, coding um, performance for these sequences, we have uh, um, we have we have done sample the original sort sequences, which are 
or 5 second, 10 bit, 60 frames per second, and 4K resolution to lower resolutions as well. Uh, so we have got uh, three different resolution groups. One is the original 4K, uh, the second one is the HD, um, HD uh, resolution, and the third one we call it HDDO. Where in that res resolution group, we have applied the uh, convex hall uh, optimization, which is part of the dynamic uh, optimizer developed by Netflix. And uh, in that um, resolution group, we have uh, encoded the, the content at uh, three different um, uh, resolution levels, including Full HD, 720p, and uh, 544p using Lantern 3 uh, filters for, for resampling. And we select the optimum uh, resolution with the best rate uh, quality performance for each target uh, rate point. Uh, the, the quality um, assessment uh, uh, method here, we, we have used the VMAF quality metric, which is the uh, machine learning based uh, metric and trained on um, multiple resolution compressed content. And uh, for the third resolution group, we have only compared HM and uh, um, the old version of AV1 only. Uh, so for three different um, resolution groups, we have set up the target bit rates. Uh, so for different target bit rates for UHD and uh, HD resolutions. And uh, for HDDO, we are testing a slightly wider uh, bit rate range. So we have set up five um, different um, uh, resolution um, targets. Uh, in terms of objective quality assessment, we have used the two different quality metrics. One is the most commonly used uh, metric PSNR, and the other is VMAF. And you can see uh, for UHD content, if we use HM as a benchmark, uh, the old version of AV1 we have tested can achieve uh, more than 7% savings against uh, um, HM based on PSNR. And uh, for the um, more recent version of a AV1, it can save 14% uh, against uh, uh, HM, and VTM can save even more, which is 28% BD rate against, uh, against HM. And uh, the saving figures are very um, close to uh, HM, uh, so close to U UHD content if we test on HD, and uh, it's slightly lower for, for HD content if we use PSNR as a quality metric. And if we use VMAF as a quality metric, the, um, the ranking is still the same, but the absolute um, uh, saving figures are slightly higher than that of uh, PSNR. If we look at the HDDO resolution uh, group, if we use PSNR to assess the quality, HM is almost the same as um, the performance of AV1. Um, but uh, if we use VMAF um, for quality assessment, H, uh, AV1 can save 6.2% uh, uh, bit rate against uh, HM. Um, Based on the encoded content we have uh, generated, we have done three different. Uh, we have done three subjective uh, experiment sessions for three resolution groups, and uh, these um, experiments were conducted in a dimmed living room style environment rather than a laboratory environment. Um, so all the test sequences were shown at their native resolution on a Sony LCD TV, and the viewing distance is 1.5H for UHD content and 3H for HD. We have employed a double stimulus methodology for all these three experiments and set up the, the, the raw uh, quality range from 0 to 100. Uh, in order to show the uh, results, the subjective assessment results, we have done a one-way ANOVA significant test uh, between the DMOS scores for evaluated video uh, codecs at the same rate points, and uh, we have calculated the number of rate points with significant differences for each codec. So you can see in this table, um, for UHD content, if we compare HM and uh, AV1, they are among 30, 
six uh, rate points tested. There are only two uh, rate points uh, with significant um, um, differences um, between these two codecs, and one is a uh, one for. Um, for one for one rate point, HM is better. The other for the other AV1 is better. And uh, if we compare VTM to AV1, there are only five rate points with significant differences among 30, 36, and uh, all of them are favor to VTM. And uh, the figure is slightly different for HD content. The um, difference, uh, the, the number of rate points with significant differences are, are two if we compare HM and uh, AV1. Um, but uh, the uh, VTM has got uh, uh, 15 uh, rate points um, with significant um, uh, differences if we compare that to, to AV1 and 14 if we compare that to HM. Um, if, if we compare uh, HM and uh, AV1 uh, on, in, on the uh, resolution group HDDO, they are six uh, rate points um, they, are, they, they have significant differences between them, and all of them um, are, are good cases for, for HM. You may be curious uh, why, um, these, this, why we got these numbers, uh, for what um, uh, content uh, um, AVY is better or, or worse. We have identified a very interesting uh, artifact appearing in AV1 uh, compressed uh, content, like I show in this uh, figure. So the left-hand side um, is the HM encoded content uh, for HD resolution, the lowest uh, rate point. And uh, on the right-hand side is the AV1, the old version of AV1 encoded uh, content. If you compare the cropped uh, uh, block on the top, you can see the monk in the middle uh, is losing his head when he's moving forward. And we, ha we have also checked that uh, in the reconstructed uh, frames in the uh, more recent AV1 um, um, compressed, compressed content that uh, it has uh, got to the similar artifacts. I don't know what's going on inside the, uh, inside the, uh, the AV1 encoder, but it's worth to, to identify and investigate uh, in, into, the, uh, into the code. Um, when we have the subjective um, um, opinion scores, we can we can then evaluate uh, existing quality metric uh, metrics on them. Uh, so in this study, we have uh, uh, evaluated six different quality metrics, including PSNR, SSIM, MS, SSIM, VAF, VSNR, and uh, uh, VBAF, and for all three. Um, Resolution groups PSNR gave us the worst performance, um, and sometimes it's even lower than 0 0.6 in terms of stroke value. And uh, uh, MS, SSM, and uh, VAF are slightly better than PSNR, and VMAF is the best performer for all three tested um, uh, resolution groups. Uh, the stroke values are all above 0 0.8. But if you look at the um, a scatter plots of uh, uh, VMAF on the uh, for three different uh, resolution groups. The um, it's not compact enough, and uh, you can easily identify some outliers which are away from the fitting curve. Uh, so that means it's far from perfect. So we, we need to continue to improve its 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 performance. But currently, it's uh, it's it's the best among the tested quality metrics. And in the end, we have uh, calculated the uh, encoder complexity. Um, so. We use HM as a benchmark, and uh, if we relate uh, uh, the old AV1 to, to, to HM, um, for UHD content, the, compl the encoder complexity is about nine times, and uh, for HD is even even higher, it's 14, 14 times. And uh, the more for the more recent um, version of AV1, the complexity has being significantly reduced only three times um, for, for UHD content and uh, 4.6 times for HD. And uh, VTM 
is just in in between. Um, so it's seven times for UHD and eight point eight times for HD. We can also relate the relative uh, um, complexity to the coding gains. Um, and plot the uh, um, plot the relationship for different uh, res for different resolution content and also different uh, um, quality metrics we have used. The trend is roughly the same. So uh, the red dot um, at the origin point is uh, HM, and uh, uh, the star the blue star point is uh, VTM, and uh, the more recent version of AVY is just in between. So it's, uh, I think it makes sense. Um, in this um, study, we are also interested in the coding gains we, we can achieve by applying the convex hall optimization, which is part of the DO. Um, so we have uh, uh, calculated the average rate uh, VMAF curves uh, of the nine tested sequences for each codec for HM and AV1 with, uh, with the converse hall optimization or result. And you can see the saving for uh, HM by using the, um, the optimization is 6.1%. And uh, for AV1, the saving is slightly higher, is 8.3%. Now we have got a question, um, because we are using very simple um, uh, simple filters for up sampling when we do the convex hall optimization, can we still improve the, uh, the, the quality of the reconstructed content by using more complex um, uh, up sampling method? Now we developed a, a uh, approach called Vistra, which we can do the resolution, special resolution and the bit depth adaptation at the same time. So we apply a uh, um, resolution and bit depth down sampling at the encoder and uh, encode the uh, the low resolution and bit depth content at, at the decoder. We, uh, we use a CAM based up sampling method to reconstruct the full spatial resolution and the, um, and the bit depths in the in the end. Um, so when we integrate this uh, Vistra approach into HM and VTM, we can save 20% uh, um, for different uh, resolution uh, groups, we can save 20, uh, 12 percent um, savings if we assess the content, uh, assess the uh, compressed content using PSNR, and uh, 18 percent if we use uh, v VMAF as a quality assessment method. Uh, when we integrate uh, Vistra into VTM, um, so for PSNR we can save nearly five percent, and uh, for uh, for VMAF we can save a seven point uh, more than seven percent for all uh, resolution groups. And uh, so here we test uh, everything on JVAT uh, common test condition test sequences, and we we also found the gains are more significant on UHD content. Um, I think it's due to the frequently enabled uh, uh, spatial resolution adaptation for higher resolutions in the test uh, QP range. Um, another thing we are we are thinking um, because for the CAM uh, model we have used uh, we use the very simple loss function, which is L1 loss function, to do the training. Can we improve the um, the perceptual? quality of the reconstructed content by using a, a perceptual quality metric doing that. So um, inspired by the by the GAN architecture, so we have modified our CM model and uh, use, uh, uh, a percept uh, use two perceptual quality metrics for training instead of uh, using L1 or L2 loss of functions. So by doing that, we can, uh, we can achieve more significant improvement uh, over the original by uh, over using the original uh, CN model. You, you can see if we assess the content using uh, VMAF, um, that's just for 
um, uh, HM integration and the test on 4K resolution only. Um, so we can achieve additional 10% savings um, comparing to the original CN model from 25% to 35%, I think is significant. So I also bring a few um, uh, examples. Mm -hmm. So let you choose which one is better. It's a perceptual, very quick comparison. So that's the first, uh, we have got three different versions. That's the first one. And this is the second one, and this is the third one. Can you tell me which one do you think is, is better? Number two, number one, two, three. Three. I think most, most, most of you will, will think three is the better. So if we put them together, the first one is encoded by the original HM encoder, and the second one is um, by using our original CN model trained by uh, the L1 cost of, uh, lost function. And the last one is the SR GAN trained by perceptual quality uh, metrics. Um, so that's pretty much um, the end of, of my talk. So in conclusion, I have presented objective and subjective assessment results for three different video codecs and uh, all the original and the test sequences are available online uh, for, if you want to download or for, for codec comparison or for quality assessment uh, eva um, evaluation, you can download from that uh, website. And uh, I have also presented a little bit work on further improvements um, uh, over the over and above the current uh, uh, standards using AI-based uh, optimization. For future work, we are currently um, continue, continuing optimizing uh, quality assessment method, method for uh, video content generated by the latest uh, compression algorithm, uh, algorithms. As I uh, show you just now, uh, it's, it's not perfect uh, yet. And uh, at the same time, we are improving coding gains through um, enhanced uh, uh, AI-based coding, uh, co coding tools. And in the end, we are also doing enhancements to the dynamic optimization. So that's all for my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. So if I remember correctly, your original contribution to, to uh, MPEG for JVET, uh, you were only downscaling the intra picture, okay, adaptively, and you're know, like then you were you know, like upscaling it with your machine learning system and everything else were the same resolution, right? Uh, is that correct? That's what I remember from your original proposal. Uh, that you know, Mariana probably remembers. Yeah, uh, actually, no. So we are we're doing uh, these adaptation for all frames, not just the intra frames. Okay, so so th that's fine. So you, it's perfect if you're doing it for all intra frames. Yeah. So your results that you showed versus VBC, you and you're like uh, even AV1. Uh, you know, are you using also the RPR concepts, or are you comparing versus the system using the same resolution for all the frames? So you know, like in VBC, we recently they adopted RPR. You can downscale, you know, like code the frame, you know, like a uh, lower resolution, whatever resolution you want. Okay, upscale it, put it in your buffer, and all the other frames, you know, like uh, can use that as a reference. Did you compare versus that, or are you comparing versus the assumption that the whole stream is coded at the same resolution? Uh, it doesn't have machine learning, obviously. It's a fixed filter, but, you know, like uh, I would assume that that's the right anchor to be using when you're doing this kind of comparison. Yeah, it's a very good point. Uh, so we haven't compared to, to that. We, we, we are still comparing to the original uh, VVC, but we noticed that there's a new feature uh, uh, adopted by, by VVC. So uh, the next, uh, yeah, 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 uh, for AV1 as well. So the, the current work we are doing, one is to, uh, we try to integrate our methods into uh, AV1 and uh, uh, VVC uh, and using these features and to do a more a fairer comparison. So that's the uh, the current work, yeah, thank you. Yeah, question, uh, 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 I had another question, don't mind. Uh, when you were presenting also your results, did you ever do any rate allocation analysis, like how many bits are placed in intra frames versus interframes or are you just looking at overall performance like averages because you're like uh, that's another thing that happens with two paths for example okay or with hierarchical structures the rate allocation between frames changes and that sometimes makes you know like the comparisons between codecs a little bit unfair because you're like well uh, especially 
for low, you know, motion sequences, if your two-pass scheme puts, you know, like a, a lower QP on the intra-frame, that would propagate, you know, much better, you know, like in all the other frames. Did, did you try to do that analysis? I mean, it's, it's you know, it's nice results, but, uh, you know, like uh, that's one concern that I see always people don't do right. Okay, look at rate allocation, because that's something that the rate control scheme, you know, like would go and fix, you know, like two-pass versus single-pass, Okay, makes an unfair comparison if you don't look at trade allocation. Uh, if you haven't done that, I would strongly encourage you to do that because that tells you a lot of how you're know, like uh, the different encoders you're know, like play you know with putting bits in different mm -hmm. places. Okay. Yeah, it's a very good suggestion. We haven't done that, but we'll definitely do it. Yeah, I, I was wanting to ask you. Um, um, you seem to present results of the VTM four. That's uh, uh, by today's standard, pretty old. Have you looked at the VTM6 and also um, the, 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 the latest encoder optimizations that they were proposed in the last meeting? Because the two together give you around 10% yeah. compared with the VTM4. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we are currently looking at that. So for the for the latest version of uh, VVC, but I don't have time to present to, uh, the, update. Yeah. Okay. But I w we will, yeah. Okay. And, and, uh, and as Alexis said, I think it will be very useful to, to look at what's there on the upscaler. Yeah. And, and just on that point, I mean, version 0.1.0 .0 is a very old version of the AV1 yeah. uh, code yeah. as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's pre pre um, standardization. So I think it's just after the, the, the stream frozen, I think. Uh, 1.0 was the. 1. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's why I compared to the latest version. Hi. Uh, when using GAN to generate uh, video frames, like for super resolution, it's often uh, a common problem is that uh, the texture or other details generated by GAN is not consistent from frame to frame. Did you see that problem? Yes, we have seen that problem because we, we man I mentioned here uh, we are using a perceptual quality metrics, but we are not using the um, quality metrics they used in the original SR GAN. So we use a more stable quality metrics like uh, MSSIM and uh, uh, SSIM rather than the, if I remember, it's VGG uh, in the original uh, GAN. If we use VGG, it will give you a, um, a very inconsistent, tempor temporarily inconsistent results, uh, which can, cannot pass, yeah, cannot do any uh, analysis or evaluation here. Yeah. As a mere last question. Uh, first of all, I want to compliment you for a very extensive contribution. Thank you. Yeah, um, I'm not familiar with this ANOVA. Can you tell us a little bit about that, the uh, subjective methodology that you're using? Uh, so that's it's a similar to a, a paired t-test, but uh, it gave us, uh, uh, I think, it gave us more um, more confidence, uh, more confidence in terms of. Uh, although it's a still 95% confidence interval, but gave us more, more confident by doing ANOVA rather than a paired t-test. And NOVA stands for? Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay, well, you, UA's on the back, so if you go next and then UA and then. Oh. Yeah. Oh, can you explain this table again? For example, the comparison between VTM and AV1. Okay. Um, um, so here, so that's the if we compare HM to AV1. So among thirty-six tested uh, rate points, uh, it's a four times nine, so four rate points, nine different sequences. So in total, it's 30, 36. We have two uh, rate points with significant differences. And one means a, for, for one rate point, H, HM is better than AV1. For the other, HM is worse than AV1. What is the confidence uh, interval? And, uh, 95%. I think that says that only two people could see. Uh, no, only two rate points, two rate points with significant differences between the two. Between these two 
the test clips? Oh, the, the test sequ uh, sequence sequences are all five seconds. Five seconds. Or three hundred frames. Three hundred. Okay, okay. So, uh, thank you very much for uh, running all the tests. I know it's very difficult. So, uh, one thing I like to point out is that uh, when you use fixed uh, intra periods for long sequences, uh, by default, I think HM and VTM use open loop. Um, GOP, but for AV1, uh, by default, it's closed loop GOP, meaning uh, for AV1, uh, let's say from the second intra frame, let's say the uh, 65th frame, all the frames after that frame could, cannot use uh, frames before uh, the 56, uh, uh, 65th intra frame as reference. So. Um, and to turn on open loop uh, GOP in AV1, you have to use enable uh, forward keyframe in the command option. And also one thing I'd like to point out is, unfortunately, forward keyframe feature in AV1, it's, it's on and off. I mean, it's supported and unsupported randomly. <laughs> so for this 0.1.0, uh, I don't think that's supported, and for the nearest one, for the recent one, I don't think it's supported. So, uh, uh, sorry, because we are undergoing a major encoder optimization, like refactoring. So, uh, I would suggest uh, either comparing both codecs using closed loop uh, COP, or if you want to run open loop gap, gap experiments, contact us. What <laughs> what is the uh, latest version support for work keyframe? Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for a moment. Yeah. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you.